Thank you, David, for that uh, kind introduction. It's very good to uh, be back here in Detroit. Uh, and, and CAR's leadership in terms of uh, providing research on the future of the automotive industry and th this whole group in terms of convening all the different players in the sector is actually quite important because th this is an area where there are so many different strands that are coming together. Without that kind of convening, it's very hard to uh, get coherence to what's going on. And so thank you for your uh, leadership in, in doing this. Uh, this is a terrific event. I had a chance to walk through briefly the, uh, the set of exhibits outside, and that was uh, a, a very good way to make it very tangible and very real. It was good to see Governor Granholm here this morning. Her leadership and energy in terms of bringing clean energy jobs to Michigan has been unstoppable, and it's been uh, quite visible in, uh, in Washington. Senator Levin, Senator Stabenow have been very forward-thinking and forward-leaning in terms of how do you think about bringing clean energy manufacturing jobs to the United States and making sure that the United States is a global leader uh, in uh, clean energy manufacturing. And so that's uh, very, very important at this uh, point in time. Today is the 246th day of the, uh, since the passage of the uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Uh, in case uh, somebody doesn't know, we are, every 100 days we get to report in. Uh, every uh, week we report into the secretary. Every two weeks we report into the vice president. Every 100 days we report into the president to make sure that we're actually online with the, uh, the goals that were uh, set out here. Since his days on the campaign trail, the president uh, has spoken about clean energy on the one hand and advanced vehicles uh, uh, quite frequently as a way to create jobs, to create good long-term jobs, to strengthen the economy, to make the nation more secure, and to build this, uh, uh, to build the, the United States as a technology leader again. Over the last 246 days, our uh, vehicle grant programs and loan programs have, have helped bring $17 billion of projects in advanced technology vehicles alone uh, into the marketplace. We're trying to do our part uh, to contribute to the economic uh, recovery. We've already committed funds to support the nation's first three electric vehicle factories, 20 battery factories, 10 electric drive component factories, and we're also funding the development of uh, 4,000 electric vehicles, 9,000 alternative fuel vehicles, and they're supporting infrastructure, really trying to think through this uh, as an entire value chain, and, and we're not done uh, yet. Today I thought I'd do two things. One is just talk about the Recovery Act and, and where we are uh, in the Recovery Act and give you an update on, on that process and then talk about specifically the linkage to advanced uh, vehicles and advanced vehicles technology and where the Recovery Act intersects and where energy and environmental policy intersects with what's going on with, uh, with advanced vehicles. The Recovery Act uh, had uh, encompassed $787 billion, and sometimes I, I feel like I, I become Carl Sagan talking about billions and billions as we go through here, and sometimes that, that makes it hard to, uh, hard to connect with, so hopefully we can ground it in some tangible realities. The first $288 million of that was tax relief, to, going immediately uh, to hardworking Americans to put money back in their pockets and, and help put a floor under an economy that was falling quite, uh, quite rapidly. The next block was really about stabilizing businesses uh, and, and state governments, and that money is now mostly out the door and in the hands of, of states because it, interestingly, from a state and local government level, uh, while this year was bad, next year's even worse. Uh, and so the need to get the, that money in place, and again, most of that money is now in the hands of state and local governments so that they can begin spending it to avoid an, another uh, uh, challenge as we go into uh, next year. And then the third block of the Recovery Act was about investing investing in the infrastructure and technology to make the United States a global leader as we go into the 21st century. And this is where the Department of Energy's Recovery Act activities are mostly focused. It's about reinvesting in America's future. It's about investing in the infrastructure and technology that will enable us to achieve our energy and economic and environmental goals much faster and at much lower cost than anyone expects. And it's about creating the foundations for long-term economic growth and global competitiveness in a set of industries that that are just beginning to emerge uh, on a global basis where we want the United States to be a leader on a global basis going forward. Within the Department of Energy, we have $36.7 billion uh, in appropriations. That $36.7 billion should support $100 billion of projects when cost share and leverage uh, is included. And so it's very, we do a lot of calculating around the government's 
uh, um, spending dollars. So 36.7 billion is a lot of money, but what it is intended to do is to bring private capital off the sidelines to bring the right projects forward and get them started in the market quite quickly. And so it's the $100 billion of projects that actually ends up driving economic uh, growth. Of that, uh, we have 32.7 billion in grants and contract authority, $4 billion in credit subsidy that should support more than $30 billion of loan, another $6.5 billion in uh, uh, Power Marketing Association borrowing authority, and then, in addition, the department had more than $100 billion of uh, loan authority for, for automobiles and renewable energy and transmission that we had not previously used, which we intend to use quite, uh, quite aggressively. As of this morning, we've selected recipients for $22.8 billion of, uh, of the funds. Uh, we've actually moved $17.7 billion out the door, so it's in the hands of the recipients. And those recipients then have spent more than a billion dollars of that already. That billion dollars costing number that a lot of people uh, talk about ends up being about three to four months in arrears because after we make the obligation, after we send the recipient the check, they then go and hire somebody who then ends up uh, going to work, who ends up submitting an invoice, which they then process and about four months later it shows up in our, uh, in our costings column. As we thought about the Recovery Act, we divided it into three uh, or four big phases. The first block from February until Memorial Day was really about creating 155 projects that were well structured that we could then offer as funding opportunity announcements out in the marketplace. This next block from Memorial Day until basically the end of September, middle of October here, we're just about uh, through this period. We have been doing one of the largest peer review selection processes that, uh, that the federal government's ever seen. We've had on average average 250 reviewers in the building every day since uh, May the 12th as we've tried to work through all of these projects in a, in a competitive peer review basis because the good news is that we are uh, highly oversubscribed in each of the funding opportunities which allows us to select great projects. The challenge of that of course is that we actually have to give each project its due and work through that peer review process in a disciplined way in order to make high quality, uh, high quality decisions and at the end of the day we get to turn down 80 percent of the people uh, who apply, which is a different uh, kind of issue which we then get to deal with. Um, this fall, as we finish, we're going to finish the selection process and really announcing uh, all of the uh, selections uh, under the Recovery Act and then move into the contracting process to make sure that all those projects get started uh, in a timely basis. And then throughout 2010, our focus really is on impact, because in the near term, we're going to be judged on job creation and our contribution to, uh, to the economic recovery. Over the long term, we're going to be judged on whether or not we've made an adequate contribution to the nation's energy and environmental future.